an amazing team. And this morning, Pastor Vainan Stanley Cup will be sharing the Word of God with us. He's our worship pastor. And uh, he's lovingly known as Pastor Vaini. Vaini. Come, Pastor Vain. Bless us with God's Word. Give him a welcome. You bless us all. Yo. <laughs> okay. That's... Uh, Seems like every time I get on the stage, it's with a bang. <laughs> you blessed this morning? Yeah. You blessed? Yeah. So, uh, I grew up in church. This is still a little bit loud. I grew up in church. So, I've kind of seen, seen it all. So, I believe part of how God has uh, put me together is I like to break down anything that's not of Him, that's... Maybe we've done it through, you've seen other people do it. And um, so this morning even, I'm not really, I am bringing the word, but it's not a typical, I'm going to preach five points or three points. Some things are taught and other things are caught. So this morning I want to share something from my heart, something very personal. But I believe God wants to deposit it in your spirit this morning. Whenever you are ready, Pastor Lesiba, you can, you can start playing that in the background. So, before we get into the Word, let's just, let's just pray over the Word. Lord, thank you that we can come to you this morning with boldness. Thank you that we can approach the throne of grace without any hindrance this morning. Holy Spirit, come and have your way in and through us this morning. And Lord, I pray that you would really come and deposit something of your Spirit inside each and every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, this morning I'm speaking on we need a fresh wind. And it's actually so ironic because when we sang that song, there were so many technical difficulties this morning, but we need a fresh wind of the Spirit of God. I believe with more than anything, we are living in a time where you and I, we are, our identities are being challenged, families are being challenged. But it actually started all the way in Genesis 1. I, I asked the children, even on a weekly basis, I ask, in whose image are you created? And then they will say, in whose image are we created? So when the enemy came and said, if you eat of this apple, you will become like God. So I wish I was there because with my sarcastic, I would be like, but I'm already created in his image. What will, the, what will the apple now change to that? And that's exactly what our generation is being faced with. We are being challenged with our identity in Christ. Our families are being attacked. And there's only one way that we are going to counter this. It's not by protesting. It's not by having a paper signed. It's when the Spirit of God is poured out amongst the church again. Because that's God's promise for the last church. Is that He would pour His Spirit out on all flesh. So when Pastor Lesiba said, even your gardener must come tonight, it's because even on him, the Spirit of God wants to pour, be poured out on so that the indwelling Christ can be shown to the world. For the creation is in earnest expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. The Philip translation says, the world is on tiptoe seeing who the true sons of God is. We live in a time where, and this morning, forgive me, I've, I gave them a lot of scriptures. I'm not sure to what scriptures we're going to get at. But something happened to me a couple of weeks ago. And I pray the same thing happens to you this morning. In the week of Pentecost, I actually visited a couple of, I've got a lot of friends in town. So I actually made a turn by a couple of people. Got to minister somewhere, just playing guitar a little bit, but I, um, I made my rounds. I was just hungry for, for God. And then one night, in worship, just standing there, the next moment, you know, there's sometimes those moments you can't stand anymore. 
and I just got down on my knees. And someone just put their hands on me and said, Lord, just touch your son afresh. Now, I grew up in church. I got baptized at a very young age in the Spirit. But that night, like a rushing wind, without me even trying, God just poured a new voice into me. And I don't know how long I lay there, maybe 10 minutes, 5 minutes, I really don't know. I, I was just... But you know what was when the moment when I got up, immediately the Spirit was like, Vainant, what are you going to do with this now? What are you going to do with the fact that I touch you again? Is it just a nice moment where you yeah, like a unifrace concrete and then you go back to your life and nothing is changing? See, Jesus did not come. He came to die for our sin. But He never came and said, guys, will you start a new religion for me? He came to establish His Father's kingdom. A kingdom that will last forever. Now we can go into doctrine and say, how is it going to end? But after all of that doctrine, that everlasting kingdom will forever remain. And we will be in that kingdom. So Christ came so that the kingdom of God could be established. So you and me can be partakers of that kingdom. The first born of many. The cornerstone out of many bricks so that we could all become part of that promise. And therefore, I believe the Holy Spirit was like speaking into my life. What's the outside evidence of what's going on on the inside? Then when I left for the, for the holidays, I was privileged enough to preach at different places throughout the country as I was traveling up and forth. And I was so aware of what God's Spirit wants to do. When simple people say, yes, I've had enough of trying to do it on my own. Hearing testimonies, even in the week of, of there was a, la a lady in my uncle's church. She said she struggled for years and years and years to get her husband just to come with her to church. Then a couple of weeks ago, he got up the morning, got dressed. She's like, what are you doing now? He's like, no, we're going to church this morning. And she said, while, we, while I called people out, we started praying for him. In that moment, he was baptized with the Holy Spirit. He hasn't touched alcohol, cigarettes again. He's doing Bible study with his family. A man that's never known God. In one moment, the Spirit of God transformed him. And see, the Holy Spirit was not just something that was poured out on the day of Pentecost. But I also want to tell you, church, the Holy Spirit is not that one week we set out for Pentecost week where we experience Him. It's not a feeling. It's the third person of the Godhead revealed to us. I want to say this out of all respect. Hear my heart this morning. It is all about Jesus. But it's also about the Father and about the Holy Spirit. And as church, we sing, we preach, we bring all glory and honor to the Son. But the Son died so that we could be restored back to the Father. So the Father also deserves all the glory and all the honor this morning. Because He is the one that's still on the throne. But then He also, when Jesus left to go prepare a place for us, He said, I will bring you the promise. And that promise, the Holy Spirit, also deserves all all the glory and honor and attention in our lives this morning. So this morning I want you, we're going to go through John a bit. And in John 13 to 16, it's called the upper room, the court. So Jesus gathers all his disciples in the upper room. And they have that last meal. And we kind of read it. They quickly had a piece of bread, had wine, and then no. It was a whole evening. And they had a whole meal around it. And then he would continue talking. But all the message, the, the only message he ever spoke before then was always about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. He was always telling us about the kingdom of God and how it affects us. And the Sermon on the Mount, how being a, 
a partaker of the kingdom changes the way you look at your brother, the way you look at your finances, the, look, the way you look differently at marriages and loving people. But all of a sudden when they are here in the upper room, it, it, it reveals some of the most crucial sermons we find today comes out of that last moment when they have that last meal. Jesus speaks on communion. He washes their feet. He gives them the new commandment, which is love one another. I want to interject here. You know, the world will not know that we are God's children if we believe the, the right doctrine, our theology. Because we can believe different things about many things in church, but there's one thing that unifies us is the fact that Jesus Christ died for us, He rose again, and He's coming back. And they will know that we are God's children by the love there is amongst us. And that was one of the things Jesus spoke on. He spoke how He was the way, the truth, the life, how He was the Father revealed, how He was the true vine, that the world would hate Him and then would hate us, how we would overcome the world, so in that last moment, that last meal, Jesus was actually revealing so much to us. But there's one thing He also reveals to us. And that's one thing that I feel sometimes is lacking. Every time I hear a message on the Holy Spirit, it's always on the upper room. The, the, the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was poured out, 3,000 people get saved. But before the cross, Jesus actually comes and He reveals to us who the Holy Spirit is. I want to tell you this morning, we need a fresh wind of His presence, of His glory. But you also need to know today that there's a person that wants to walk with you on a daily basis. That's why the Spirit of God dwells within us. And that's what we're going to look at this morning. Just a couple of scriptures where Jesus actually shows us the person of the Holy Spirit. I find it interesting that so many times we, we see them on different levels, but Father, Son, Holy Spirit, there's a part in Colossians where Paul says they're all the same. They're in perfect harmony, uni unity always. God the Father was just the first to be revealed unto us. Then the Son was revealed to us. And then thirdly, the Holy Spirit was revealed to us. But it's God. It's one God. And that one Spirit dwells with each and, each and every one of us this morning. So in John 14, Jesus says, verse 15, He says, If you love me, keep my commandments. And if I pray the Father, and He will give you another helper, that He may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees Him nor knows Him, but you know Him. For He dwells with you, and I will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. So I'm going to tell you the Holy Spirit is your helper. I can testify and I'm not going to get into my testimony again because I'm kind of I'm kind of over it you know I'm I'm moving on God's really doing amazing stuff but I can testify of what the spirit of God has done in my personal life how he helps me on a daily basis it's a thing my dad taught me the moment I don't know just holy spirit I really need your help in this situation. And He does. He helps you in every situation. Not that I am not, I'm not saying that's not my aim, but so many times I'm like, okay, I need to get through activity one, two, three, and four in this period with the class. So the goal for this 45 minutes is this activity. I uh, get, just get off to it because the Spirit of God takes over in class and He does something in the lives and then we do catch up with the work but I can see how God is busy changing the lives of youngsters because the Spirit of God is busy doing something 
It's not just for a Sunday. Yes, it's amazing. There's moments when we really experience Him. How many of you, while you are sitting there now, know, can know that you've got a heartbeat? You know it, but how many of you really feel your heartbeat now? No, not really. But if I would ask you to quickly run to your vehicle and back to the the finnigste wat jou by jou kaar kan hardloop en terugkom, then you're going to know you've got a heartbeat. So when you are not aware of the Spirit of God, He's still there. Busy in your life. Helping you. For Jesus did not leave us as orphans. He helps us in every moment. I know some of you will say, why are you speaking on this? Not? Because we need to understand the value of of who the Holy Spirit is. It's not just for that feeling. Because if you start understanding who the Holy Spirit is, your whole life is different. The way you approach people will become different. The way you go through situations will be different because you know you've got a helper with you and God's with you. You are never, ever, ever, ever alone. Those of you that have gone through divorce, you know the rejection and the loneliness. Those of you that are far from your children, you know, but even then you are not alone because the Spirit of God is with you. The moment I feel alone and there's nobody here, then I'm like, I'm not going to put on music that's not edifying me. I'm going to seek God's face. Oh, like this, I, I know He's there. He's the helper. He's the one that comforts us. In verse 25 it says, These things I have spoken to you while present with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and bring to remembrance all things that I said to you. Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, not as the world gives do I give. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. The Holy Spirit is the one that teaches us. He's that peace that you experience no matter what storm you are going through, what you are facing. He's also the one that will bring things into remembrance. Again, I'm going to say, who's been married for more than maybe 20 or 25 years? Anu, can you remember every single meal your wife has ever made? No. No. You can remember the first time she burned the chicken or it, she, was, she was bringing you love offerings. That's why it was burnt. So, but there are certain meals that stand out. There are certain meals that stand out. But you can't remember every meal. But if your wife didn't give you that meal every time, you wouldn't be here today. And therefore, I can't remember every single moment of my life where God was busy, but there are moments that I'll never forget. But it's because of that daily walk, that daily reminder of who the Holy Spirit is that I'm here today. As it takes a lot of money to fill this, it takes more to fill this Spirit. And therefore I need to fill myself the whole time. Then when I'm in a situation that's got Nothing to do with something I had experienced five years ago. All of a sudden, a thought comes rushing to me. And I can just share something. I'm like, oh, where does this come from? It's the Holy Spirit. That's bringing into remembrance something that, that I need today. But something that happened a long time ago. I'm not going to give big revelations today. I want you to catch on to something today. Maybe it's something that you know. It's, maybe it's just something that you need to be, be reminded of again today. For some of us, this will be fresh road that we're traveling on. And for some of us, it's a dusty road that we need to go travel on again. Because without the Holy Spirit, we're not going to make it. We are not going to counteract in any other way, but if truly the Spirit of God dwells within us. You know what's my biggest desire for my children in the Eastern Cape? 
is that they would be filled with the Spirit of God. That's my biggest desire for my children. For every child I come across on a daily basis at school, my biggest desire is that the Spirit of God would start dwelling in each and every one of them. That should be our desire this morning. Then Jesus in, he skips two chapters, but then in chapter 16 verse 5, Now I go away to him who sent me, and none of you ask me where are you going, but because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. You know, so many times we, we just say the Holy Spirit is the one that convicts us of sin. But he's also the one that reminds us of righteousness. He shows out all the errors, but he's also the one that draws us back to the Father. And that our relationship with the Father and with one another are restored. Because of righteousness, I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. Still, I have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when the Spirit of truth has come, He will guide you in all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me and he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. So when you face a situation and you do not know what the truth is, I think it's very easy to not know what the truth is. Especially if TikTok and Instagram is your go-to place. But the Spirit of God should be your go-to place. The Word of God should be the, the truth. And He will tell you what's the truth in that situation. See, the key is to abide in Him. Seeking Him, praying and just worshipping Him. In Romans 8, we all know, it, it says, Therefore there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Now the work has been done on the cross. But you can still walk in a place of not having victory. See, the battle to the ring, the boxing ring, the battle is not won on the way to the boxing ring, but it is lost there. I'm going to say it again. The battle to the boxing ring is not won on the way there, but it is lost there. And although we have overcome because of the cross, the fight is still very real. And we will only win it when we walk according to the Spirit, not according to the flesh. You see, many Christians just think, oh, well, there's no condemnation now anymore. It says for those who walk according to the Spirit and not according to the flesh. Just because you've been saved does not mean you automatically walk in the Spirit. Therefore, we need a daily refilling of the Spirit of God in our lives. Therefore, we need a fresh wind of the Spirit of God touching our lives. The moment I start, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak now, don't hold this now, no moderation uh, pains, the moment I start getting irritated and I start losing it at school and I'm not at the space where I know I could be as an educator, it's the moment when I have not spent enough time in His presence. 
I start losing the battle when I am not in His presence. Because the moment I spend time in His presence, the things that irritated me doesn't irritate me anymore. The things that would be an issue, it's no longer an issue. Because I've been with the King. What can possibly go wrong if I've been with Him? And therefore this morning, I just want to maybe like knock on your door. Word wakker! Maybe that's kind of a... Just wake up. Because the Spirit of God has got so much in store for you. This thing keeps us so busy. I never see people, oh, I forgot the Word of God at home. Turn it back. No, the moment we forget... Yeah, you're going to say, but I've got the Bible on the phone. Not when you're looking for a scripture. When are you filling yourself again with the scripture of God? And it's not just for educators or for pastors. Whatever business you are in, whatever you are going through in life, you need the Spirit of God in your life. If you are a business owner, you need the Spirit of God. He's the one that helps. He's the one that guides, teaches you in truth, bring to remembrance. Maybe say, oh, but I've been to seminars. No, that's why you need to come on a Wednesday night when you, you are offered teach, teachings. Because you fill yourself, and when you need it, the Spirit of God is the one that will remind you of that thing that is needed. If I've never experienced anything how can I be reminded of it? You can only take someone, if you are a tour guide, you can only take someone up to the place where you've been. On your left, you will see something I've never seen before. No, that's not, that's a bad tour guide. I want to know why did they, no, in a hundred years, someone will say, here was a, uh, pastor that put lights behind and will explain the whole thing for us. That's a tour guide, understanding his surroundings. Do you know your surroundings still? Or are you leading people to a place that you're not really sure where, where you need to go? See, we can only take and tell people about something we've experienced ourselves. And it's the Spirit of God that can take us there. Now like how Paul writes it here in verse 7, he says, Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. And yeah, like Paul, he's kind of so, he was very sarcastic sometimes. He says, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells within you. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. <coughs> but if the Spirit of him who raised Christ from the dead, Dead dwells in you. He who raised Jesus from the dead will also live, give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. I ask myself that question. I've been serving God for many years. But when I read it the other day, when it said, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. And I know it, He dwells in me. But I don't always allow him to work like he wants to work. So this morning we're going to pray for people who want to just say, well, Lord, I need a fresh touch of your spirit. But I don't want you to come out just for that touch. I want God, I, I want you to catch what I'm saying this morning. It's not just about the touch. It's about the transformation that starts taking place here. I have to get, the, I'm so hungry for God, there must be a space in my day where I seek Him. 
Before there was inverters where I lived, when there's load shedding, I would, in that two hours, I mean, what am I going to do nine o'clock at night, go to bed? No. I would pick up my guitar and I would just worship Him. And some of the songs we are singing today, and it's just the testimony of if we really seek His presence. Then some of the songs we sing now and again comes out of those moments where God was just truly, it was all about Him. The, the idea was never to, let's write something. It was, I just, I, I need more of God in my life. And the next minute it just comes pouring out. And God can do the same in your life. God wants to do the same in your life. It doesn't need to be a song. It doesn't need to be a sermon. It's that word that God wants to speak into your spirit himself. So that when someone comes along and they say, well, the Lord told me this, you're like, yes, it's just, I want to thank you for being obedient because the spirit of God has revealed it to me. So this morning, we're going to pray for people that are really saying, Lord, I need a touch of your spirit. Because I need your spirit to once again dwell within me so that I can live it out and make an impact in the world. So every eye closed. If there's anyone this morning, please come. If you need prayer this morning, please come out to the front so we can pray for you. You have no idea what tomorrow holds. Maybe there's a challenge just around the corner. So if you need prayer this morning, you need a breakthrough from God, you need to say, Lord, I just want to be filled with your spirit. I just want to be aware of your spirit in my life every day. Just come and stand down in the front so we can pray with you and we can pray God to just be with you and guide you every step of the way. I'm going to ask our other leaders as well, the Pastor Quibbers and the other pastors in the house, Pastor Martin. Uh, just come and uh, other leaders as well elders come and help us pray for the people and then we trust god for a miracle for you if you come out to the front you know there's times when you you need to just grab hold of the moment and say yes lord i want to just commit to you i need you um in my own life i can't do it but i need you lord and you need to answer the call to pray Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God, because you are a faithful Father. You are God. You are good. You are, you are so amazing. If you are sitting there, just close your eyes for a moment and just think about what was said this morning. Just for a moment, just think about your relationship with the Holy Spirit. And if you are sitting there, you need to just give Him more space in your life, in your whole life with your children, with your finances, with your business, with your family, with your friends. Just open up to him this morning and say, yes, Lord, I just want to bring these people to you. I want to bring this to you, my life to you this morning. And therefore, Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for every person in this house, everyone who says, yes, Lord, I'm giving over to you. I'm giving every part of my life over to you, Holy Spirit. Guide me, lead me, show me the way, restore me. Heal me, Holy Spirit. That right now we can do that. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Just for a moment, forget the people around you. Just forget the people around you. Close your eyes. If you need to raise your hands, you can raise your hands. Just sit in His presence. Just be in His presence. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence. You are God Almighty. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you. We magnify you. Jesus, mighty God, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father, 
you are good. Your goodness is running after me. Your goodness is running after me. Thank you, Lord. Your goodness and your mercy is new every morning. You are the God Almighty. You are the one who restores. You are the one who says, where the enemy have come to kill, steal, destroy, I have come to bring you life and life abundantly. We take hold of that scripture, Father God. We take hold of that Holy Spirit. You are reminding us this morning that you have come to give us abundant life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Glorify you, Lord. We exalt your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We lift you up. We lift you up, Lord. We praise your name. We exalt you, Father. Mighty God, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, we all have a desire to to come closer to you. We all long for your presence in our lives. We all long to hear your voice clearly when you lead us. When you lead us into a new territory, when we need guidance, when we need protection, when we need your word. We want to clearly hear your voice, Father. And therefore, we know your voice comes through the Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit, we declare this morning, we open up for you. We open up our hearts, our minds, so that we can hear when you speak. And we ask you, we give you permission, we beg you to please guide us, Lord. Please make the word alive for us in Jesus' name. That you be glorified in us, through us, whatever we do. At the end of the day, it will all point to you. You are the giver of life. You are the one who guides us. We pray that you will be glorified through us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Pastor Vane, thank you so much for the word. It really stirs up um, a longing to live a holier life. It's not a thing of don't do this or don't do that. It's just a case of being closer to God the Father through the Holy Spirit. Because when we are there, these things that we are battling with kind of just falls off automatically. It's not a case of I must stop doing X, Y, or Z. It's a case of getting closer to Him. Those things just fall off automatically. The desire for those things become less. That's the bottom line. Do you guys realize that we have nothing to boast about? Nothing. Nothing that we have accomplished we can boast about. Nothing. Everything is, if God blesses us or when God blesses us with this or this or this, it's simply to point back to Him because it's His goodness that's running after us. Because anything that we think we have accomplished can just be turned around in a moment. In an instant, we can lose the thing that we think, I have accomplished this or I have accomplished that. Always bring glory back to Him. Amen? Amen. Did you receive the word this morning? Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand in the house. I honestly want to thank you. I really want to thank you for coming to church so um, regularly. It's so nice for us as pastors who lead this church to see every Sunday we have basically a full house of people coming to church. You want to grow. You want to move forward. You want to learn. And that is very encouraging. And I want to thank you for that. Thank you for your continued commitment to serve God. Um, I'm going to ask you to stand with me. I'm going to ask Pastor Quibbers to come in closing prayer for us. And then after that, remember those forms, remember the QR codes at the door, remember the coffee in the hall, and the Pastor Vane, thanks again for sharing the word with us this morning. God bless you. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you are a good, good God. That you are a gracious Father. We thank the Son for the complete work on the cross the work of restoration, putting us back in right standing before God. Holy Spirit, we thank you for fresh revelation of God's love for us, a fresh outpouring of who you are. 
and leading and guiding us every day, helping us in every situation we face, knowing that we do not have to face it alone. The comforter, the helper, the guide is with us and leading us every step of the way. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May you have a wonderful afternoon. Do not forget tonight, 6 o'clock, our soaking service. Please join us for a lovely cup of coffee or tea. And remember, Band of Brothers, register for Friday night for our bonfire. Thank you very much.